Hey, what's up, guys? Team Demise Andy here, and today I know this is a bad place to be starting a new series in the height of my non uploadiness but um, yeah, I really want to do this. So, uh, without further ado, guys, we're gonna be dissecting a character today. And if you could tell by the thumbnail, title, tag, anything, the description, I don't know what you're seeing. Uh, yeah, this is Kiba. Now, Kiba is from Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, and he makes a few spots here and there. Boruto, but uh, he's not really a prevalent character, so to speak. So, uh, it c it's not going to be a super long one, but um, <clears throat> I want to talk about him, and I want to discuss, you know, some reasons why I really like Kiba, <clears throat> but uh, other than that, I just kind of want to talk about his accomplishments he had throughout the series, whether, you know, they were small or big. But, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, I'm starting a new series. If you want to see anyone else discussed like this, uh, if you've seen an anime on my channel, uh, feel free to pick a character from that. If you've just got a random character from a random anime, throw it out there. I might have seen it. I've seen a few anime. But without further ado, let's jump right into the dissection of Kiba. Maybe you should pull the fucking trigger. So here we go guys, this is my dissection of Kiba and as you can tell uh, Kiba is one of my favorite characters from early Naruto. Now, that being said, his character really does fall off for me in the later series because they didn't do anything with him. And it might honestly just be because of Akamaru why I initially liked Kiba so much. But uh, his character is just one of those, like cool kind of background characters that we don't learn too much about. Um, we do know he was born on July 7th and is obviously a part of the Inazuka clan. Uh, or they're basically the dog training ninja of the Narutoverse in layman terms. And, uh, you know, they're pretty cool. But Kiba's character kind of was the first rival of Naruto, so to speak. Um, not counting the whole tuning exams, we'll get into that, but like, they both wanted to be Hokage, and as you can tell, it didn't work out for Kiba. But, um, moving past that side note, Kiba was a part of Team 8 headed by Kurenai. Uh, his partners were Hinata and Shino, so there wasn't really a lot going on with any of them until, you know, Hinata kind of broke her shell during the pain arc, but... Kiba still held a presence for me just because I initially liked his character going from good to bad. Well, not... I wouldn't say his character was bad. He was more like, um... Just being a dick to Naruto just because everyone else was, so I would assume anyway. Um, because he wasn't ever inherently a dick to anyone else. I don't... I can't remember anyway. But Kiba's character really grew on me as time went on, and I mean, you can think what you want, but Akamaru is this shit, and I love Kiba's design. So, moving on, let's see what he's actually accomplished in the series. And you're just a pair of lips that I've lost in For Kiba in the tune-in exams, at least for the written portion, he kind of did what all the other kids were doing. He was trying to find a way out of the impossible test. Now, in his case, he was using Akamaru, which I don't know why Akamaru would be allowed there until, you know, we kind of find out what this test was actually trying to go for. They didn't care if you cheat. They were encouraging cheating. They just wanted you to not be caught about it. Now, Kiba definitely had one of the more screwball ways of getting through it. Like, there, there was only a few more others that were almost as ridiculous. Like, I'm pretty sure Conqueror's was... The whole puppet thing, that was... Yeah, uh, 
I, I don't even want to get into that. Anyway, so they pass, and then we get into the actual tuning exam, like the fighting portion. Um, to get the Earth Scroll, if I remember, they kind of took out a no-name team, and then Kiba got cocky, and he's like, well, since we finished so early, let's take out the rest of the competition. That way there will be less in the end, which would have been a great idea, you know, if you know, you wasn't kind of useless, even though, you know, they were okayly strong. Like, I, I would say on a scale of useless to godly, they were a little bit of, they were like a little bit above useful. So, you know, it's weird to think about. But anyway, so that portion happens and you know they move on to the actual 1v1s and Kiba goes up against Naruto which is a really good pairing I honestly believe because not only did we get to see Kiba kind of in the spotlight we got to actually see Kiba's character change a little bit Kiba was always like one of the douchebags to Naruto like I said but like he wasn't like I don't feel like it was just him being a dick it was just the way everyone else was so he just did it but either way, uh, he went into that fight thinking full well he was going to dome Naruto. Like, one, two, three, you're done. But uh, come to find out, you know, Naruto ended up winning. Spoiler alert, if y'all haven't watched it, I don't know why you're watching this video. But uh, yeah, it's it was really, it wasn't a great fight honestly, but it was just like so meaning to Naruto's character and Kiba's character that I, I really did very much enjoy it and I I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite fights in the show, but as for Kiba, it was probably his shining fight other than the next one we're going to talk about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in to the Sasuke recovery mission. After looking back at everything, this was kind of Kiba's biggest moment in the original series, which don't get me wrong, he was awesome in, but it's sad that he really only had one major moment. Either way, let's break this down a little bit more. So while the whole thing with Sasuke was going on, the gang decided to create a team to head after him and bring him back. Who was in charge of this team? None other than my boy Shikamaru who basically handpicked his team efficiently. He was recommended Naruto by the Hokage and chose Choji with his own knowledge of, you know, the lovable guy that Choji is, even though I feel like there could have been a few people who had a little bit better of a, uh, better of a chance at this, but let's not get into that too much. So, who else is he gonna pick here? Well, he wanted Shino, but Kiba came along and informed them that, you know, Shino's out on a mission, but he was free to help. So now we got Kiba on board with the last minute replacement plan for Shino. So finally we get Neji, who was recommended by Rock Lee. So the team is set up. Shikamaru, Naruto, Choji, Kiba, and Neji. Well, Sakura also tried to join, but uh, nah, fuck out of here with that shit. Shikamaru basically said, no. Hell no. You are, well, he, he told her how it was. You're too inclined to Sasuke to be able to help us use force on him if needed. So, you know, it's true, but then again, it's like, you know, Sakura would have fucked something up either way. Even though I like Sakura as a character, she would have been terrible for this mission. So now that the team is pretty much set, let's get into what happens during probably my favorite arc in the original series, outside of maybe the tuning exams, which we just discussed. So, I'm not going to really highlight the search all too much, but Kiba's role in hunting down Sasuke was the front of the line. He was supposed to use his enhanced scent to search for him along with Akamaru and try to locate booby traps along the way. Uh, because, you know, I want to get into the actual fight that Kiba was subjected to. I'm going to skip a little bit of stuff. So to begin, when they were trapped by... Now, guys, I'm going to butcher these names. I'm sorry. Jerobo... I, 
I guess that's Jerbo. I, I forget how to pronounce his name. It's been forever. Anyway, Kiba couldn't do too much as he was never seen as, you know, kind of the brains of the operation. That was left up to Shikamaru. But when they escaped, they were all paired up with one of the Sound 4 Ninja, and Kiba got Sakon and Ukon. Don't let that fool you, though. It's one person. If you haven't seen the show, I don't know why you're watching this video. But it's basically one person, two personalities can split. It's fucked up to explain. I don't remember how all it works to be 100% on him, but dude was strong as all fucking five hells. Uh, I see why they were paired with Kiba, though, due to him having Akamaru by his side. It was a good 2v2 fight, even though Kiba was kind of outmatched from the start. I held hope for him. Kiba and Akamaru kind of, you know, they held their own for a little while until Ukon... He used the curse seal in the second level, and it gave him a major power boost that just, you know, Kiba couldn't keep up with at that point. Uh, he, they used their human beast transformation, and they jumped into the attack, but Ukon used the, what was that thing called, Ross, Rossamo or something like that, Rossamon? It was, it was basically a huge wall jutsu, and it blocked the attack with ease, and at this point, the... You know, uh, Sakon preyed on Akamaru as the transformation was broken, and they basically wounded Akamaru to the point of, you know, pretty much we all thought he was going to die. Uh, I was really scared for my favorite little pupper, and on the other end of the spectrum, things weren't looking good for Kiba either. Ukon released another ability out of his ass that he could combine himself with not only Sakon, but Kiba. So... Mm. This was kind of an oh shit moment for the first time I watched it, and it was, you know, really effective. Kiba was pretty much left to the option of stab himself, causing himself pain along with Ukon, so he could get out of this. So at this point, this is where I think that Kiba really shined. He was willing to stab himself to save not only himself, but pretty much save Akamaru and the mission. So it was kind of like, you know, he literally just jabbed himself with a knife so he could protect the rest of the mission and his best friend. So, you know, that's really cool to me. But uh, at this point, Kiba kind of knew he was screwed. So he grabbed Akamaru and he tried to retreat. Uh, at first thought, you know... I was like, okay, Kiba's retreating. That's kind of a bitch move. But it's clear that he's outmatched here. So he kind of has to. So when Kiba retreated, I was like, okay. But then he smelled... Uh, was it three? Yeah, three new people coming. Which we later find out was Gara, Tamari, and Konkuro. Uh, then I thought, you know, I was thinking, you know, what the hell is going to happen now? Like, they got to be coming to help him, right? And sure and behold, Konkuro showed up to help Kiba. Which, if we go back to the tuning exams, like, I just mentioned Konkuro and I didn't even think about it when I was setting that up. But yeah, Konkuro, uh, saves Kiba and he kills Ukon and Sakon. He kills him. Like, straight up caps his ass. But, uh, yeah. K Konkuro just showed up saving the day. And even though it was kind of a cop-out, it would have pissed me off more if everyone else didn't get saved. That would have pissed me off more. Because if Kiba was the only one who needed help in his fight, then I would have been a little bit tilted. But everyone kind of used a little bit of help from the sand, so it was alright. Anyway though, my final thought on the Sasuke recovery mission, even though I hate the fact that they went after Sasuke in the first place, because... I, I guess I seen it different than everyone else. I was never a fan of the fact that, you know, oh, Sasuke left the village, let's, you know, try to save him, oh no, whatever. Because I felt as if Sasuke intentionally left the village, there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it, you know, that he had said, I am not coming back, he, w he chose his path. He should have been labeled a rogue ninja there, but I'm not going to get into it. Long story short, this was a hell of an arc, and uh, it saved the original series for me. If you all have watched this channel before, I am not a huge fan of the original Naruto series. Shippuden, different story. 
the original series, not a huge fan of. But uh, this really saved the whole thing for me because it was kind of a culmination arc of everything that was to come, and I really enjoyed it a lot. So I'm wasting a little bit of time here. We got a lot of stuff to discuss, so let's move right on. Obviously more scenes with Kiba in them, but nothing too major as far as I can remember from the original series. So I wanted to move on to the time skip and get into Shippuden. So Kiba is obviously still obsessed with being Naruto and trains pretty much the whole time that Naruto does. Except for, you know, he goes on his regular missions as well. Uh, in this time, you know, Kiba doesn't lose focus and he eventually masters a three-headed transformation with himself, Akamaru, and a clone. And so nothing too major there, but he also becomes a tuning during this time. They get their scroll taken away from them in the initial run after attacking a stronger team, but since they are kind of like, you know, they're the sensory group, Kiba smells, uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, it's Kiba, uh, Kiba smell, and not as Byakugan and Shino's bugs, they kind of just track this team down no matter what. They end up hunting down the other team and taking both scrolls, but then something happened and the event got cancelled, and it was pretty much just left up to the Kage to determine among the few left from each village to appoint their getting to tune in if they believe they earned it. Then, when Naruto comes back, we get to see Kiba riding a much larger Akamaru in the anime, showing how much the little pup had grown up and how much Kiba had grown, too. Uh, not so much because he was, you know busy and couldn't go on a mission with Naruto, uh, we didn't get to see too much of Kiba after that right there. Uh, anyway though, let's jump into Shippuden and obviously the war will be coming soon. So the three tails capture recovery, whatever mission you want to call it. Uh, I didn't really want to start off talking about Shippuden with this one, cause you know I can talk about this arc, but I don't remember much of it. Other than I kind of like Gurren's character and she had a cool ability. A brief summary of Kiba's involvement, though. Team 8 and Kakashi was the original forerunners of the mission. They were captured in Gurren's prison until the rest of the gang joined up. He was then put in charge of guarding the area. I'm not going to lie at all. I don't remember too much of Kiba in this arc. In the lightest. What little I do remember, like I said, was Gurren. So, let's move on to something I do remember. At least a little bit better. Okay guys, I know, I'm sorry. This is another quick one. Uh, <laughs> apparently Kiba didn't do anything besides in the war arc. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Without further ado, let's talk about Kiba in the five Kabe gate. The five Kabe, the Kage summit. Uh, Kiba kind of just got knocked out. And this was even more embarrassing because it was Sakura who did it? I do want to talk really quick about the discussion to take out Sasuke that led to that though. It was such a good moment amongst the group of original characters that even Kiba wasn't solely featured. I had to bring it up. He was kind of a douchebag yet again in this scene telling Eno to stop crying even though you know it... It's Kiba. He went on to say that he had to be the one to take Sasuke out to prevent a war. Which we all kind of understand. It was Sasuke or the war. Which, you know, it was very hard for everyone to hear. Especially coming from, you know, even for him to hear. To do since, you know, it was never shown that they had a relationship with Sasuke. But it was still powerful. So, like, even though some of these characters never really interacted with, you know, Sasuke. 
it was still powerful to see them all be like, you know, he's our friend, but we have to do what's right. We have to do what's best for the village. So, I just wanted to talk about that really quick. Let's move into the fourth great ninja war. moment we've probably all been waiting for or at least I have even though I'm kind of sliding a little bit but we'll get into that. Uh, Kiba was placed in the fourth division he makes a slight joke saying that if he does good in the war he might become Hokage and then his sister says he shouldn't take war so lightly. Uh, I don't think she has seen a war either but she might have. So uh, you know which war <clears throat> would she have been in though? I mean the one right before would no. I think his mom definitely has, but I don't think his sister has. Excuse me, guys. But it was a nice throwback to the point, nonetheless. Uh, our cast have never lived through war times, and this was... This was just one of, like, the little things to let us know this wasn't just a fight. This was a war. And it wasn't just between two nations, either. It was for the whole Shinobi world. When the Zetsus appeared... Uh, he was pushed to help in that fight, I, if I remember. And then when night fell, he was on lookout duty with Neji. And when Neji almost passed out, Kiba was willing to take on full watch out duty, sending him to the medical center. But, you know, Neji, you know how Neji is. He refused. So the next morning, they resume fighting the Zetsu. And then him and Neji fight the reincarnated Sound 4, Ukon Sakon, and Kitamaru. Kitomaru. Kiba easily took out Ukon and Sakon though due to the power he gained over the time skip, but him, Neji, Shikamaru, and Choji were trapped in a jutsu before they could seal them. They were saved by Naruto and Ino Inoichi. Sorry guys, I, I am really bad at names. Inoichi, Inoichi. God, I, I know how to say his name. I've heard it a hundred times, but I can't say it. Inoichi, Inoichi. I can't fucking, you know what I mean. You know who I mean, Ino's dad. So other than that, Kiba was basically just another shinobi in the battlefield, having a few moments to shine here and there, but nothing super special. So yeah, Kiba's whole run through this whole series has been fighting Ukon Sakon. His biggest moments have revolved around that, and that's why I'm crossed. Kiba is such a cool character and the only character in the original fucking Sikh people who had a pet, and we don't even get to see him expanded upon. Really? His teammate fucking Hanada goes on to be the main fucking character. Okay, people are pissed. No, not really. Everybody likes Hanada better than Kiba anyway. Anyway though guys, let's jump into just a tiny bit of background information on old Kiba. So as we all know, Kiba is a short fused, often impulsive character who uses Earth Release for the most part and has a set list of Jutsu we have seen him use such as Beast Human Clone, Combination Transformation, Fang Passing Fang, Fang Rotating Fang, Fang Wolf Fame, Fang, not Fame, <laughs> Four Legs Technique, Human Beast Combination Transformation, Double Headed Wolf, uh, Passing Fang, Shadow Clone Technique, Tail Chasing Fang, Fang Rotating Fang, uh -huh. and a few more that he never really showed in the series, but he was said to have had. So, as you can see, he really just doesn't have a lot going for him. I mean, yeah, it's cool, the Inazuka style, but uh, it doesn't really help him out in battle all too much. Uh, his partner, Akamaru, is ba his base like Jutsu entwiner. Uh, most of his Jutsu rely on solely Akamaru being there, so you know, following his clan's preferred jutsu type, I guess that's alright. His character is more than less a tracking ninja that can fight but doesn't have a huge defensive pool. Uh, his stats for the Boruto era out of 5 are Ninjutsu 3.5, Taijutsu 3, Genjutsu 2, Intelligence 2, Strength 3, Speed 4.5, Stamina 2.5, and Hand Seals 1.5. As you can tell, he's not super, he's not super hot, 
Uh, but he has good overall numbers, and to me, he's a cool character who I can't wait to see more of in Boruto. Alright guys, I appreciate you all watching, and let me know what you want to see next, whether it be a Naruto, 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 Naruto 2 uh, discussion video, or any other anime you've seen on the channel, I'll do my best to get it done. Uh, also, I just want to point out this is the longest video I've ever done, it took me the longest amount of time. Uh, I really like doing these longer style videos. I've just got to get more time on my hands. This video has literally taken me a week just to get set up. And uh, it shouldn't have took that long. But I just haven't been motivated. But uh, numbers are going up. My video views are going up. My comments are going up. Everything is going up. So I mean... If it's just for you guys, I've got to get back on track. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to. Or you like what I'm trying to do here on this channel. And I guess I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.